Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy, also known as ETCG1 on this channel. And hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Well, it's the Fairmont's birthday because the Fairmont got a bunch of stuff that came in the mail today and I have definitely spent some serious money. This is the first video that uh, cameraman Brian, ETCG1 video that cameraman Brian's shooting, by the way, just for a little bit of trivia for you. But before me, I have a ton of stuff for the Fairmont and I thought I would give you an update. And what we have are the brakes, and basically all the stuff I need to finish the rear end. And I'll go over the parts piece by piece so that you have an idea. Because I know that you're all thirsting for Fairmont videos. I am thirsting to work on the Fairmont, but these things take time and money. Uh, all this stuff, including the tires, which I have over here. Uh, these are Mickey Thompson's Street Comp tires. Uh, they are 245, 45, 17s. They have an asymmetrical tread pattern, as you can see. Uh, these are included in the price, and I've spent uh, about 3,800 bucks, so almost four grand on all this stuff. Uh, so this is not sponsored stuff. This is stuff Eric the Car Guy is buying. Anyway, um, sticky tires to go along with, and if you've been keeping track on social networks, you know pretty much what's going on. And I did a video similar to this for premium members uh, on the website, but these two uh, are going to go together, and you'll notice these are five lug. And what's on there now are four lug. These are actually off a uh, Crown Victoria. The least expensive things. You know, you think you spend a lot of money on wheels. 280 bucks for all four of these. <laughs> As opposed to, uh, like, one of those Mustang wheels is probably 280 bucks. The only thing I'm struggling with now is whether or not to keep these black or paint them the same color as the body. But they're going to have, eventually, I don't have them yet. I want to do chrome centers in the middle here. So over the top of the lug nuts, chrome centers. Think cop car. I have new spindles and hubs that are different than the ones that are on there now. The ones that are on there now are an older style that have the bearing that's integral as part of the rotor assembly. What I'm doing is I'm upgrading to SVE dual piston calipers. Don't like the way these were shipped. They got shipped up. Darn it. I wish they were bolted together and that didn't happen. Uh, these already have the these are loaded calipers, obviously. They already had the pads as part of them. And I've already thought to myself, Okay, so I need to replace brake pads. Where am I gonna find the brake pads? So I need to figure that out. Uh, same is true with the rotors. These are slotted 13 inch uh, rotors. They're pretty massive brakes that are going on. Uh, here's the five lug conversion. And these are the spindles that I'll need in order to make this happen. I actually think I got these backwards. Yeah, I have these backwards. This is actually the left side uh, that I have here. And just in shipping, they got a little bit of powder coating chipped off of them there. But this is an actual Ford part. This is off of the uh, a Mustang Cobra, is where I believe this stuff comes from. To go with these brakes, and I'm kind of curious as to why they sent me two of these, but these are steel braided brake lines. And I have two sets here, and it might be for two different setups on the vehicle, I'm not really sure. I have to figure that out when the time comes. So one of these sets of brake lines I'll be using uh, here's the caliper on the other side. Also, this is a new master cylinder off that same same Cobra style. I'm probably going to take the brake booster off of the Mustang that I haven't put it on here. If you remember correctly, the Fairmont doesn't have any power brakes. It's just a straight master cylinder that's on there. Uh, given that this would uh, have to work with a brake booster, I don't know if I'll have to get a brake booster that fits this or if the one that's on the Mustang will. I'm basically going to take the master cylinder off the Mustang and see if this will bolt up. We'll take things from there to see if we can adjust it correctly, but because this is going four-wheel disc, this is an adjustable proportioning valve. In fact, it came with all the stuff to bypass the existing proportioning valve uh, because I'm going from drum brakes to disc brakes. Proportioning is going to have to be different. In this way, I can adjust it. So I can just go out there and adjust how much force gets applied to the rear brakes. Ford brake fluid, and actually this is for the rear, the friction modifier for the rear end. And since we pretty much wrapped up what's going on up here, let's move to the back. But know that I already have the front struts, K members, everything else for all this stuff up over here. And I showed that to premium members in that other video. All right, you may remember from other videos where we talked about the differential. This is out of an 86 Mustang. This is an 8.8, .8, and 86 would be the first year for the uh, 8.8 .8 rear end, I believe. So this is really just gonna be my shell. Uh, as we've determined on the uh, show that I did with Paul Cangelosi, I'm looking at like some really tall highway gears. These are like two, 
20 something. I mean, these are really high gears. The gears are gonna be upgraded, but I'm certain that the axles that are in here are 28 spline. And I'll show you what that means here in just a second, but take it in, this is the rear differential, drum brakes and everything, not even gonna use them. In fact, this backing plate's already bent up anyway. We're just really using the shell. This is what we're replacing, this whole thing. I also have all the rear suspension parts. I've got the upper and lower control arms. Right now, with everything you see down below, if you drop down, with all this, this completes the rear end. This is the differential. And this is what I was talking about, whether it being 28 or 31 spline. This is a traction lock Ford racing uh, differential that we have. That's what that spring is. That spring is there. There's clutch packs in here. In fact, when I take the old differential out, I'm gonna disassemble it so you can see all the stuff that's inside it. But this one's freshly rebuilt. Now the splines inside there are what connect to the axle. And there are 31 of them in here. Now normally they come with 28. So there, there's like, what is that, three less splines? And this is the spline count. This is what that has to do with here. Here's one of the axles. These are Mosier axles. Mosier, 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 whatever. This is what makes this 31 spline. So this is a much thicker shaft. It can handle a lot more power. Now, is this more than I need? Probably. I probably could have stuck with a 28 spline stuff that's back there and just switched over, but I was already buying axles anyway. And the only thing I needed different was this differential. So I probably could have saved that differential and rebuilt it, but given that I got this whole differential for like 220 some dollars, and it would have cost me about 160 something to recondition the other one, I figured why not upgrade to 31 spline. But that's how it all goes together, like that. Also, once again, five lug conversion. So we're going from four to five lug. Gives you more wheel choices as far as clamping force, things like that. They, Ford sent them out from the factory with four lugs on them, and I guess they thought that was good enough. Uh, but five gives you more wheel choices, but also gives you more clamping force to the wheel. 10 studs to go along with those, because we'll need those to hold the wheel on. Here are the gears that go on said differential, like so. Really careful, this is hard stuff. So eventually this is gonna get bolted onto this after I get everything all cleaned up and everything. But these are 355 gears, and this is the pinion gear here. So these guys made together like this, and make car go down the road. And we'll have to go through, I've got some measuring equipment and some other stuff that I also got some new tools that I can use that uh, we can use to set this whole thing up. I'm gonna do basically a series of videos on rebuilding this rear differential. Now you're thinking, Eric, that's just bling, because in a way it is. It's gonna look pretty up underneath there. So partly this is bling, but there's, there's more than one reason for me to do this. And that's these, these little stops that come out inside here. What these are gonna do, and you'll see when I do the video on this, is you tighten these down, and they can actually help secure the bearing caps that hold the differential in place. So they help with that, so they help with that clamping force. And the reason why I'm beefing up this stuff, I'm using a manual transmission. A manual transmission will send massive shock loads through the drivetrain. So the tighter and more right your drivetrain is, the better. Also notice, drain and fill plugs. So I've got a drain plug. So right now, I would have to remove the cover, and even on the new differential, to change the, to change the uh, differential fluid. Have to take the cover off. With this, I won't. With this, if I wanted to change differential fluid, all I gotta do is pull the plug. And then the fill plug's back here. And I can't remember whether the stabilizer bar goes across the front or the back of this, but if it goes across the back, getting this cover off becomes more of a challenge. I won't have to worry about it, being able to change fluid like that. Plus, it's not as messy. Well, eh, whatever. Okay, I'm justifying it. This is, this is yes, it's, it's a little bit pretty, but it also serves a function and a purpose. Bearings and shims. So this is, this is an entire kit to help set up that rear end. So I got shims, I've got seals. These guys are what are referred to as C-clip eliminators, which means what normally holds this into that differential, what normally holds this into here is a little clip that goes onto the end of here. And that holds in it, it's called a C-clip. Fits on here and keeps the axle from coming out. But the axle, in essence, is floating. So there's a little bit of movement back and forth that this has. Now, since I'm going through all this trouble anyway, I'm gonna eliminate the C-clip. 
So these are C-clip eliminators. And instead of uh, you having a C-clip that holds the axle inside the differential, these hold it from the outside. They bolt out to the outside of the shaft. Let's go back over to the differential. I'll show you what I mean. Once I get this off of here, backing plate and everything, you see these four fasteners. Well, they match up with these four holes here. And this is going to be pressed onto the axle itself. So this will hold the axle in instead of a C-clip. So that's why it's C-clip eliminator. I have to cut out the bearing race and everything here because this will take the place of the bearing also. This will support the shaft. It will seal the shaft. More importantly, it will also hold it, hold it firm and we won't have to worry about C-clips. Sometimes after a long period of time, those C-clips wear out enough to where they can fall out. And if you've ever seen a vehicle along the side of the highway with the axle that just came out the side, that's because that C-clip went. So it's not gonna happen with a Ford because, well, I've got these. One of the things I did not have was rear shocks. Now I got everything else with the suspension. I got coil springs, I got the front struts, but I didn't have any rear shocks that I got. So I ended up getting these adjustables from Strange. So just with the turn of this dial, I can adjust the dampening rate of this shock. And this may be important for like launches and stuff because we may want the right side to be different than the left so that it would uh, perform a little bit differently. Uh, so adjustable shocks for the rear that we have. These, and there's two of these, will go on the ends of the axle after I take that backing plate off. And this presents something of a challenge also because these are the mounts for the rear calipers. So I've got to somehow, this may be longer bolts or whatever, but this is, this is how it's going to go up in there. So this is the mounting bracket for the caliper and this will be on the outside of the axle. So I'm just hoping that uh, all this will work out. <laughs> Everything is accounted for except for these C-clip eliminators. I figured, well, I'm in there and it wouldn't be cool to put some of these in, which is why I went for these. Uh, but they do present a problem when switching over to disc brakes that I'm gonna have to sort out. I don't know if it's gonna be longer fasteners or what, but as you can see, they, they space out a little bit more than this, where this is just gonna bolt straight up to the axle. So uh, this, this is an unknown and it has been since day one, but I've got these and I'd like to try it and see if it'll work out. Yeah, when was the last time you saw a vented rotor for the rear? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is like the front caliper for a Honda Civic. <laughs> uh, and, it's, and it's on the back here, but these are the, the rear brakes. These are 11 and a half inch rotors uh, to go along with it. As you can see, they're slotted. Yay, that's pretty. That covers that. Then we have new parking brake cables uh, to make these, the parking brake work on these calipers. Now, I wonder if they'll actually work here because all this stuff is designed for Mustang. And if we remember from our frame connectors, the Fairmont is about four inches longer than the Mustang. That may present a problem when it comes to mounting uh, this brake hardware because it's that much longer. So I don't know if I'll be able to stretch that, move things around, put a longer cable somewhere. Not sure, but I have those just in case. Plenty of differential fluid. This came with all this stuff. So real purple stuff. And then we have one more steel braided line to go between the body and the differential, because uh, this one's got to move. But everything from here uh, that goes out to the axle, uh, out to the ends in these calipers, doesn't have to be uh, flex line. Although, maybe that's the reason why I have four uh, of those other lines. Maybe there's two that go up to these calipers. In case you were wondering, the, the five log conversion that I'm doing, four and a half inch bolt pattern. For those of you curious and playing at home, maybe you want to build a Mustang or a fair amount of your own. Four and a half inch bolt pattern is what I went for. That's why I went for the Crown Victoria, and that's what all these other things are. In fact, we can show you. Yay! It's good that we'll be able to drive the wheels. So, the wheels will fit on this. These wheels will fit in there nicely. I'm really happy with that part of it. I knew because everything on paper said it was gonna work, but until I actually did this, I didn't know for sure. Oh yeah, I got a bunch of lug nuts around here somewhere too. 20 of them to be precise. Yeah, there's still a ways to go. And you're like, Eric, what about the engine? The engine just makes the power. All this stuff makes sure it gets to the road and also makes sure it stops so I don't wrap it around a tree. All important stuff. A car is not just an engine. That's part of what I'm trying to teach you here. So much more. There's way more money to spend than just on your engine. Trust me. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll talk about that when the time comes. For now, we got this stuff. You've now been completely updated. You know where the project stands. You know the kind of parts I have. 
you know where I'm going next. I'm gonna start by rebuilding the rear differential and work my way from there. In fact, I can get that differential built, get it up in the car and everything before I ever pull the engine and transmission out of this. Won't it be fun to drive this thing around with 355 gears in it? <laughs> we'll see what the straight six does with that. Yeah, it should be fun. Anyhow, let's close this out. If you have automotive questions, airatthecarguide.com is where I ask that you go. Google+, Facebook, Twitter, also Instagram, if you wish to connect with me socially, close each of my videos, including ETCG ones with be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.